So here it is, a 1998 Fiat Coupe. But not any 1998 Fiat Coupe. This is the 20 valve five cylinder turbo. Now a few of you are gonna be able to know about these, but just to recap those that aren't, with the Fiat Coupes, you could get the uh, two litre turbo 16 valve. I believe you get the two litre 16 valve and you get the five cylinder 20 valve. Then you got the five cylinder 20 valve turbo. And that was the daddy. 220 brake horsepower when these things were new. Absolute beasts. Front wheel drive. So lots of torque steer. <laughs> but these are now starting to get super collectible cars. Now I've always thought they're fantastic looking cars. These have a special place for me because when I was a lad and I hung out with a group of mates, one of them had a Fiat Coupe 20 valve turbo his dad ran a marketing firm he worked for him and he had one of the electric blue ones so those of you who watched my channel for a long time will have seen that i've had an electric blue one of these before actually on the channel which i just cleaned up and traded straight out again so yeah i have got really good memories of it obviously was super jealous at the time of him having one but this has always been my favorite color in the alfa romeo fiat range the sort of protea red i don't know what it is in fiat but in alfa it's protea red always been my favorite color so i was on the old facebook group for the dealers uh it was day before last sorry um adrian just dropped it off last night and um this came up now as you'll find on that group well you won't find it because you can't get on unless you're a dealer but we're all the same we're all just mad about cars and we stockpile stuff we really shouldn't and every now and then we have a clear out so i saw this pop up it was actually in london so um hell of a hike for uh, adrian i think i might have mentioned in a previous video what the drama he had with that uh, pickup so um i think i ended up paying about well, i don't know actually i don't think adrian's invoiced me out but it's gonna be 300 odd quid for sure if not more maybe 400 pound just getting the thing picked up and as you can see it is in a very sorry state for itself so we're gonna have a look around it together because like i say genuinely i haven't had a chance to have a look around this yet so the 20 valves, they came with these four spoke alloys, but I think the big thing is the Bremo brakes that they had, which I don't think the lower spec models were. I think some other specs did have those wheels. There's gonna be a, a specialist on this. There's gonna be someone on the, that comes on and watches this video that's gonna know everything inside out because there always are with these cars. But it's got the Bremos on it. It's got the old 20 valve turbo badges on it. And as you can see, it's just got lack of peel everywhere. Sunroof model. I'm not sure if that's more or less desirable than these. Normally as cars get older, it gets less desirable because they leak. <laughs> um, yeah, just lack of peel everywhere on it. So it obviously is in need of a paint job. We can say that straight away. You're not going to get away with just a little fettle on this. This is going to need a complete paint job, which it merits because these are getting, like I say, quite collectible and quite valuable. Now, everyone I've had has had welded panels down here. Now, this has either had a good repair not just an mot repair but a proper repair job or it's managed to get away with it because these always rot out here inside looks good underside looks good so the condition of the seals looks quite good there now obviously i haven't had it up on a ramp we're going to have to do that before we go too far we're doing anything on it we're going to have to get it up on a ramp and make sure we're not piling into money into a pup so this side you can see why they would rot because what happens is the water sits on this edge here it sits on this edge here and sort of eats away and then you lose this part of the panel here and you lose the inside but again on this side it looks good now it's difficult to tell i would imagine a repair has been done but if it has been done it's been done to a very good standard it's um not an easy one to spot i've got a brand new tire here well it was when it went on the car i don't know how long it's been on the car because now it's perished probably from running flat but that's a new tire on there so was someone part way through i know absolutely nothing about this in fact i tell you what the first thing we should probably do with this because i genuinely didn't know nothing about it i just made a decision and bought it is let's run a car vertical and see what we can find about the history of car like potentially how long it's been sitting there is supposed to be a bundle of paperwork with it but with Adrian's breakdown, that is actually still in his van. I haven't actually managed to pick it up yet. So let's run a car vertical and find out what's going on there. Right, so we'll do it out here in the cold on my mobile phone rather than a laptop. So put in the old reg. Right, so reports in saying nothing about mileage discrepancy, nothing regarding theft, nothing regarding accidents. 
few because that could have affected its value quite a lot. I didn't even check whether it was a cat car. <laughs> Obviously, these checks should be done before you buy a vehicle. I'm a good example of how you shouldn't do it, as you've seen in the past. So manufactured in the first, the first 1998. First MOT failure, 2006, just parking brake. Parking brake again in 2007. 2008 exhaust system, 2009 exhaust system. MOTs in 2010, 2011, 2012. MOT history is reading pretty good so far. 2013 offside stop lamp. 2014 brake pipe corroded. 2015 a bit of suspension. 2016 offside lamp and wiper blade. Yeah, nothing major so far. 2016, 2017, 2018 parking brakes. Right, so we're getting a lot of stuff here. So we get to 2018, we've got parking brake, suspension, oil leak but not excessive. Well, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's to be expected, I guess. Rear discs rusty, anti-roll bars. This is the point where it looks like the car might have stopped to be used. Right, 2018. I'm not seeing anything after 2018, so this potentially has been off the road for four years. Let's have a look at the mileage graph. So the mileage graph shows a nice consistent line of it being used, but for small mileages, a couple of thousand a year, nothing major, up until 2018 at 61,000 miles. So I don't think we've got any power at the moment. We're going to have to get the power on and check that mileage. So it looks like it's okay on the mileage front. It looks like it's okay on the damage front, and we're getting an idea of when it was off the road now. But obviously you've got to be really careful doing these checks before purchasing the vehicle because they don't always come out clean like that. Let me just show you this one. Check out this Fiat 500 I found on Facebook Marketplace. Now the car was listed as having had an accident. If we scroll down, we can see that car vertical shows it's got an accident, but it was listed as a category S, but no structural damage, just the bumper and the bonnet. But if we scroll down, we can find that car vertical shows it was a category S write off in the 16th of 12th, 2021. It's actually got pictures of the pre-repaired Fiat 500. If we look at this picture here, we can see the impact is quite a lot harder than just a bumper on a bonnet. There's a big hit in the front here that has pushed that rad pack all the way over. And your chassis leg on a Fiat 500 is just here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's have a look at the next picture. You can see here, this is where the rad pack bolts into the chassis leg and all of this is twisted over. I can tell you having done tons of Fiat 500s, that that chassis leg was most definitely tweaked over in this accident, which is why it was classed as a category S. But more interesting still is this picture here. Now, what do we know from the Citroen Cactus I did recently? That is gonna be some kind of pad for some roof attachment. So this was, I would say a previously a driving instructor's car or something very similar. Now, as I said, this seller had been honest and said the car had been a previous category car, but had made out it had been incredibly light. Now, this is why you can see it's so important to do your own checks on a vehicle. Great news is Car Vertical giving Chops Garage viewers a discount on their first Car Vertical. You'll find a discount link in the video description down below to go and get your Car Vertical check on either a car that you're about to buy or perhaps one you've already bought. I want to thank Car Vertical for being a continued sponsor of Chops Garage. Now let's get back to the Fiat Coupe. So good news, no accident damage because these, like I say, 220 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, they did get very affordable. So a lot of them did find the hedge. So I'm glad to hear there's no history uh, of any accident damage on it. I like, said so the mileage seems nice and consistent. We'll check what the exact mileage is, but if it's anywhere under 100, that's going to be a big plus for this car. So inside on the 20 valves, you had your leather interior. So the leather here has somewhere in the colour, but actually not worn through anywhere this would actually do really well with a balm i think the back seats are in good nick there doesn't seem to be any smell of damp in here it doesn't smell damp and i can't see any staining around the headliner so it might look like that sunroof is keeping out the water for the moment 
Now this happens to all of them. They get sticky dashboards. You have to clean them off with white spirits, clean them right back. Sometimes you see some horrible sort of carbon fiber and stuff put on them. This is the thing I always liked about them is the metal dash, or sorry, plastic, the, the body color coming from the outside. And we've got an old school boost gauge. 61,489, that is a good mileage, guys. I'm pleased about that. That makes another reason why it might be worth saving. I'm waiting to see. Apparently it does have a lot of service history, but there's some worrying signs that we've got some mice on the go. You can see some of the underlays being eaten there. Yeah, all of this will clean up quite nicely. I'm, I'm not too worried about the interior, but hopefully it's whether they got to the wiring or not. So we're looking to see the seat will fall forward. Yeah, I mean, the carpets look good. These rear seats are in really nice condition. They'll clean up really nicely. Now, those of you that know anything about these cars, and I'm sure there's some Fiat uh, Coupe experts in the comments already telling me all the things I've got wrong. Um, but those of you who know these really well will know straight away what problem I'm going to have with the bonnet. And you just do, it won't open. They never do on these. The trick is, you have to, well, I'm sure they do because people must fix them, but you have to get a screwdriver in and flick it across, which I did earlier, and hopefully it hasn't settled back down again. Now, where's the grab? Now, the other problem we have is someone's taken off one of the gas struts on one of the sides, so I need to uh, get something to hold it up a second. There we go, propped up. Yeah, these always stick which is why you've normally got broken grills with somebody being going in trying to get stuff done so coolant is at the minimum or below minimum but the right color i guess all of this is pretty irrelevant this has been sitting four years we're not really going to have a clue but what we can is pull aside and look at the cam belt and the cam belt doesn't look crapped up that doesn't mean we're not going to do a cam belt on it but it's just about safety wise about starting now with this engine as you can see, that cam belt is right up against the chassis leg. The only way you can do these is to undo the engine mounts and literally shift the whole engine across. Even then you only get around that much space to do it. The specialists are very good at doing it with in the car, but some people just engine out job and do everything at once, which is something that might end up happening with this if we go the whole hog. Engine out, get it down to Lee at Barham engine, do a full refresh, change out the clutch get everything done in one go now mercifully i'm not seeing signs of our little rodent friends here it's not looking too bad obviously the plastic cover for this was in the back of the car it should be sitting across these coil packs oil wise now it's got oil and it's the right level and it's actually not that dirty so it's had some oil so again without the service history we're not going to find out too much about it i guess the thing to do is now is everything you shouldn't do so basically at this point with a car sitting like this in an ideal world what we do is we pull the coil packs pull the spark plugs we sit some wd-40 in it for a bit we jack it up we get into the side we turn the engine over by hand to see what's going on and make sure nothing's seized up being Chop's garage, we're probably going to put a battery pack, jump pack on it, see if we've got power inside, and give it a go. <laughs> so we're going to do the exact opposite we should do. Because I'm impatient, and at the end of the day, I think this is going to have a full rebuild anyway. Likelihood in my mind is that the alternator is going to be seized up anyway, probably. And um, the alternator broke, probably won't last either. So if it does run, it'll be turned off very, very quickly. So we've got our trusty Top Don JS2000 out. Been using this loads with all the bangers I've been buying recently. I know a few of you have got hold of them as well. They're just absolutely brilliant jump pack. It really is one of the only ones that's had the grunt to get everything done and easy to get done. Highly recommended bit of kit. And if you're going to be flipping cars, one thing you absolutely need, especially if you're doing older ones, is decent jump pack. As always, they give Chops Garage viewers a discount, so I'm going to put a link in the description down below for that so you can get your discount code for that. A great Christmas present for somebody. Let's hope this video goes out before Christmas now saying that. Right, let's go and see what we've got power-wise on the dash. Now we have, showing you the wrong keys, 
got all the keys, which is quite important with these. You have a, I think it's the red key is the master key for the ECU and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important to make sure you get one of those if you get these cars. Right. The clutch pedal has just gone straight to the floor. I put my foot on it and it's literally just gone straight to the floor. So I think um, any chance of moving this car about have gone straight out the window. Right. <laughs> Let's see what we've got on the dashboard. Anything? No lights on the dash at all. What's going on there then? Let's try with the red key. Right, we've got nothing on the dash. Adjusted the charger, we have now got... Ah, there we go. All right, we've got some lights on the dash. Don't know what the red injection light means. We've got no fuel. Let's see what it wants to do. Oh no, it's gone off again. I think that battery is totally muddered. Oh, she turned over. Oh, she ran for a second or two. All right, let's try again. Oh no. I think even with a fully charged jump pack, this battery is absolutely dead. Right, I want to put the top down on the boost setting and that actually starts to feed charge into the battery. So we'll leave it on that for a few minutes and see if we have any more luck. But at least we know it turns over. Well, I still think we've got too little in terms of battery power to get it to actually run for a minute or two. A bit of a stronger turnover now. There's still no fuel, I don't think, getting to it. So the JS2000 still got 75% battery in it, but I just think this battery is completely dead. Now I can put it on the boost setting again and get it to feed some charge in. But realistically, I think what we also need to do is get some fresh fuel in it. So I think that is pretty much as far as we can take this right now. So I think next step is get the battery off, get it fully charged up, get some fresh fuel in it. We know it's turning over, so we know the engine isn't seized on it, but clearly we've got a problem with the clutch. The, the um, friction pad may have seized to the uh, flywheel. It could have burst, burst past the seal. I'd expect to see lost fluid all over the floor if it's done that. So uh, it could be the cable snapped behind the pedal, but I don't think so. From previous experience, that feels an awful lot to me, like um, yeah, like the disc, the um, clutch is stuck to the flywheel or something. You guys are a bit more mechanical than me. You probably have a better idea. Go on, comment down below. What should I do next? The pedal's going straight to the floor. So um, no pressure in it at all, just bang, straight to the floor. So you guys give me a tip as to what I should try on that next. Um, it would be interesting to get it running and see if we can get it, sort of force it into gear and that might break it off, get it working again, I don't know. Again, comment down below if that's a good idea or not. But as the videos are coming out almost daily at the moment, we will have to pick it up on another video, I think, see how we get on with it. But I say for the moment, some fresh fuel, get the battery charged up. But it does seem to me, like I say, that belt seems very new. So I'm also hoping I can get the paperwork off of um, aid soon, because I suspect that's going to show it had a cam belt not so long before it got laid up. So with this car, it's not going to make me money, guys. Let's be clear about that straight away. You cannot... Let me be clear about this. You cannot restore cars and make money restoring cars. It doesn't happen. You see, any of you that watch, um, what is it, Bangers and Cash will know this. If you're ever in the market for a car like this or any other sort of modern classic or classic and you're not going to get the spanners out yourself and you're not going to do work on it yourself, go to the auctions and buy a restored one because you'll be buying it for a lot less than the person spent getting it done. That might mean you have to spend, you know, you can always find cheap cars kicking around that need loads of work, but I guarantee you, your best bet is go and buy the restored car. You'll be buying it for less than the person spent getting it ready. So like I say, the thing with this is make sure we can get it running clutch wise to be honest i think the engine's gonna have to come out anyway we're gonna have to do a clutch on it we're gonna have to do the cam belt even if the history says it's had one so that engine is probably going to come out anyway but we'll check before we go too far that the underside isn't rotten as a peach if it isn't then it's worth getting the engine done it's worth getting the paint job with 60 odd thousand miles on it these cars can be worth quite good money and like i say i'll still be upside down by the time i've done it it won't be a car to make money on but this game isn't all about as you probably know with this channel i'm just a car nut
and not every car is simply about making money for me. The reason I do this as a job is it gives me the living that allows me to have the toys and to play with them. But you are quite within your rights to say down below, Jones, you're mad for buying that and start to list all the other projects that I haven't finished yet. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I hope you're enjoying following along. Let me know if you're enjoying the daily updates or whether you'd rather I just left it for longer periods and got more content in the videos. Um, so the feedback so far seems to be quite positive. The comments, people seem to be positive at the moment. So if you are enjoying uh, the daily, up, almost daily updates, or it is just a more natural blog of what's going on, then let me know because... Um, I can't promise you're always going to like all the content, but I try and do my best to make it enjoyable for you. Anyway, catch you again soon. Thanks ever so much. And if, th thanks ever so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below because that's the metric that helps the channel the most. Catch you again soon. Don't forget, if you've just recently purchased a car or are about to buy one, get your car vertical done. Remember, there's a discount link in the description down below.